Hi, this is a video for the testers of my Ableton Music GPT plugin. If you're seeing this and you're not a tester, then please feel free to contact me. Maybe I can give you access to the, to the plugin. Let's start. Let's go straight to business. Um, if you're a tester, you got the zip file. A zip file, very straightforward, contains a readme file. So please go ahead and read it. If you are inclined and doing your own programming with the API, that is running the deep learning part of this um, of this tool. There is a API test IPIMP, which is a notebook where you can access the API and play around. But today, most interesting is the Ableton device itself. So this is your connection of Ableton Live with the Music GPT that I'm hosting. So, well, let's get started. I'm here to show you how this works so that I don't have to write everything down. Let's start Ableton. Perfect. And I'll just go to the, the session, not to the arrangement view, um, to prepare everything. So first, we start with a rather blank project. I'll remove those in order to run. Yeah, in, in order to, to run um, the, the plugin, we need somewhere to place it. So what I usually do is this will be my main track. Um, the only purpose of this main track is to actually run the device. It will not be involved in um, anything that has to do with AI. It's just a placeholder. So from the zip file, we have the device. We just drag and drop it here, and then it appears there. So you can do this magic here. The device is P window. You double click, and then you get this most <laughs> beautiful window. Okay, so how does this work? So the idea is that there's an AI that can do MIDI generation. In order to do MIDI generation, we need a few more um, tracks. So let's create another MIDI track. And while we're here, another MIDI track. And here, another MIDI track. I'll give it appropriate names. So let's start with drums. And we need bass, bass, and also guitar. Again, so far, nothing would actually happen. It's just, well, how can I say, rather empty, empty canvas, but we'll deal with this in a moment. So as you can see, one, two, three, four, there's, there's, there's a loop with four bars, and this is starting point. So currently the plugin works best with four bars at a time. I am tempted to believe that it will do quite a lot of horrible things when you change it to something something else. So please stick to four bars and at least try around. I have planned to allow this plugin to go with more than four bars, but this is coming. Okay, let's see. Let's have a look at the window itself. So first and foremost, a couple of things. What you need is an API token. I just put in this is my API token for me. This is not a valid API token. So if you copy paste this, if you just type it, it will not work. <laughs> when I publish this video, it's already deactivated. So don't think about it. <laughs> On the other hand side, if you have, if, if, if I gave you the plugin, then definitely I will also have given you an API token. So it allows you to connect to the server. We have a few more things here. So this is very, very straightforward. On the right side is a temperature. The temperature allows you to add more randomness to the generation. So if you go down temperature, it will be very deterministic. If you go up in temperature, it will be the opposite. It will be, it will even go a little bit chaotic. So what you can do is you can compose different, different instruments. Yeah, you can compose styles using those, those instruments here. How? Well, first you would select, you would select a track, and then you would enable it for AI generation. Enabling means you select one of these. So this is going to be some drums, and then you do toggle AI. And toggle AI is a crucial aspect. Toggle AI means you can enable and disable different tracks for for AI composition. So if a track is enabled, then it can be generated via AI, and also if it's enabled, it will be used to to inform the generation. So it's at the end multi-track generation, 
all the AI enabled tracks will be taken into account when generation happens. And if you have more than one track selected, the other tracks will inform the track that you are going to generate. Our drums here are toggle AI. Then you get this tiny little annotation here. Now it's AI activated and you can do it opposite. Now it's AI deactivated. Enable it again. And then let's cross our fingers, compose the track. Okay, looks beautiful. Um, if I would play this, you cannot hear anything because I did not assign any plugin to it. Let's use this here. Beautiful Ugly tone. I like this one and I hope that we can hear something. Well, if you don't like this, you can compose again, get something else. Sounds very promising. And now the multi-track part. So once we have the, the drums, what about adding the bass? So I select this one. I will tell it that you are now going to be bass. And then I hit compose again. So we get something more in the style of a bass. If I play this again, we wouldn't hear anything. Uh, I don't have that many fancy instruments installed, but the DLS music device seems to work. So we get a decent piano to play. Awesome. Let's listen to that one. And if you don't like it, you recompose. So it's interesting. Okay, cool. And while we are here, let's go for the guitar. Um, we select guitar from here, we enable it. And again, enabling means once I compose music for this track, all the other tracks will be taken into account. Let's compose. There you go. So what do we have here? I forgot, you can't hear anything. We need another instance of the music device. Beautiful. There you go. Interesting to say the least, I would now go up in temperature, compose a track. Why not this? Well, and this is how my Ableton Music GPT plugin works. Thank you very much.